If you want to call this a hot take, go ahead and be my guest. You can go ahead and even tag freezing cold takes so that way they can call me out in the not so distant future. But I don't think this is a hot take at all and more so a declarative statement. The version of what you saw last night by the Arizona Wildcats against Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl is a reason why they are going to win a Big 12 championship underneath Jed Fish within the next two years. Let's talk about it. If you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy, plus anything going on with coaching searches, the transfer portal, national championship news, bowl eligibility, and a bunch of other nonsense, make sure that you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment telling me your thoughts on the Arizona Wildcats epic 2023 season. Tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, Wildcat Nation, and college football aficionados everywhere about this channel because we're on the race to become the number one YouTube show talking college football. Make sure you follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. That way, conversations of our favorite sport never have to stop flowing. Arizona 38, Oklahoma 24. They get 10 wins. That's epic. That is beyond epic. This is, in my opinion, the culmination of why sometimes swinging for the outside name ends up benefiting you. Because I don't know many people that realize Jed Fish had been around the block. Not just in college football, but the NFL. And I'm not sure many people understood what his knowledge of the game was. If you talk to anybody in New England, they will speak resoundingly of a guy like Jed Fish. And he comes into Tucson, Arizona after a dreadful final season underneath Kevin Sumlin. And he sucks. Plain and simple. He's awful. 1-11. The team is dog crap offensively. They can't stop anybody defensively to save their lives. But there is your foundation and ultimately what you're trying to build upon. The next year he goes in the transfer portal, adds in a few players, Jaden Delora being one, Jacob Cowing being another, and you start to see progress. They're getting wins. They're not bull eligible, but they are at least improving and five and seven is the finish. Well, now this was the culmination of the rebuild being set in stone, and now it's time to the retooling stage. This is the area where you go out the transfer portal and you add in proven commodities to finalize your roster. That way you are competitive next season, and you're building off of this sustained success. Arizona was projected to get four and a half wins to begin the year. They doubled down and they won 10 games. They beat five ranked opponents. That's the most in college football tied alongside Washington, who ultimately may be able to surpass that if they get wins over their next two weeks against Texas and whoever they were to play in the national championship. But I digress from that. Arizona was not expected to be anything this year. In fact, many people didn't even know who Noah Fafita was. I think they know who he is now. And if they don't, well, get ready for a rude awakening because the kid balled out once again on the brightest stage. 354 passing yards, two touchdowns, a passer rating of over 129.8, a QBR of 70.7, not afraid to sling it around the yard. And he also found a great connection with T. Jones and, of course, Jacob Cowing. You're in for a rude awakening if you are a Big 12 team watching that performance last night because this is a top 40 offense that's returning its starting quarterback. This is a top 40 offense returning its number one receiver. This is an offense that's going to feature four of the five starting offensive linemen more than likely back for next season. This is a defense that was top 20 on multiple different avenues, including third down conversion rate. So they were able to force teams to get on the field. They were a takeaway machine down the stretch. Last night, six turnovers. This is the bow on top of the successful season that you are going to hold on to. And now, Everybody in the Big 12 is on notice. Everybody is seeing what Fafita can do, especially when you put him under pressure. Good luck bringing him down behind the line of scrimmage because if his legs will manipulate you and get you tongue twisted and tied up to where he is turning a loss of a down into a gain of 20. That's what you saw last night. And you saw consistency, consistency, consistency. Very few mistakes were made by Arizona. And that is a culmination of coaching. That is a buy-in, a standard set in practice that carries over to Saturdays or Wednesdays or Thursday nights or whenever the hell you play football games. That was the performance that made sure everybody knew Arizona means business. Arizona is not going to be that doormat anymore in college football like they were at the very end of the Kevin Sumlin era or when Rich Rodriguez was finalizing his flash years down in Tucson. Jed Fish. Name nobody remembered. Name nobody really brought up in coaching conversations. Ten wins. One for the record books. For the Wildcats. And now they're looking good. And here's the best part of all. 
if you were a kid in the transfer portal last night, or you're a kid right now still deciding what does your future entail, you look at a place like Tucson and you say to yourself, establish young quarterback that I can build consistency with, good number one receiver that I can build a relationship alongside, Ox, excellent offensive line that's going to return four or five starters, decent rushing attack, good pro-style game plan that allows us to be dynamic offensively, a defense that's going to return exceptional talent, not to mention there aren't going to be spots available for me. Why would I not want to go there? Because if I'm in the Big 12, I'm still a Power 5 school. I'm not playing against Mountain West teams to where conversations are going to occur in a 12-team playoff era. Do they really belong? Does, does Oregon State truly belong alongside the names like Washington and Utah and Colorado? Because they played against Mountain West schools this past year. You're in the Big 12. You're playing against the good teams. You're playing against a fun team. You're going up against Houston that I think is going to be turning the corner underneath Willie Fritz. You're taking on teams like UCF, not to mention Utah, Oklahoma State, TCU, last year runner-up in the national championship. Maybe Baylor finds its resurgence underneath Dave Aranda. I'm a big believer in Dave. Are you? This is a good roster and it's a great roster that's coming back in place and they already have the culture set, set in stone. So here's what you do. When you go out and you add in players via the portal, you're telling them, this is how we do things down in Tucson. And it works. In fact, it works pretty damn well. Did you watch what we did last year when nobody believed in us? Honestly, the only team that probably over exceeded expectations more than Arizona last year was West Virginia. And even then you could make an argument that based off of the stat line, Arizona egregiously was the more prepared team, the more well-equipped team. And they feel like they have a higher ceiling than West Virginia ever will. This is a program that if the NIL collective starts to actually invest, get the right players, and keep players alongside for the foreseeable future, not watch them leave to go to the SEC or the Big Ten, they're in business. They are a team that is fun. They know what their identity is. They're not afraid to sling it, and they're not afraid to go ahead and sucker punch you just so the message sinks in pretty clear. We mean business. We belong here. And I can tell you this much, the way that Jed Fish calls plays and the way that this offense looked last night against a very solid Oklahoma team, they're going to do damage in year one in the Big 12. Oh, Noah Fafita, I can tell you this much, there are going to be at least four names mentioned in the Heisman Trophy race. I would at least have Noah Fafita at number five, if not in the top four. I would at least say that when you look at T. Jones going into next season, he is going to be a Bolitnikoff Award favorite. When you, T. Mac, my apologies, not T. Jones. So let me get that out of the way, Wildcat fans. T. Mac, not T. Jones. I'm not going to try and say to Territor McMillan multiple times, but he's going to be a favorite to win the Bolitnikoff next year. And if he's not the favorite, he's at least going to be in the running. And here's the other part that's really interesting. A few years ago, you were watching players leave Arizona to go play elsewhere, whether that be at USC or UCLA or Oregon for that matter. Now, you're going to watch those same players at those schools look at Arizona as a viable option, not just for playing time, but for an opportunity to be a part of something special. That's what happens when you have a good coach. We don't ever give the coaches, I think, enough credit. We always talk about the players and how they're able to run the schemes and what they're able to do when the bright lights are shining on them. But it's important to also mention the coaches because they're the ones that set the standard every single day in practice. They're the ones that make sure that the work and the due diligence is done in the film room, in the weight room, on the training complex, every step along the way so that when Saturday rolls around, you're looking at a finite roster that is very, very few and far flawed, flawed between. That's what you're looking at with a team like Arizona. They mean business. They are a team that I would not want to be facing if I'm a Big 12 contender next year. Because I know it's going to take one play, and it's game over. It's going to take two plays, and I'm down and out of the count. And it could take three plays, and what was supposed to be a close call ends up turning into the ass of a lifetime. Arizona fans should be elated after last night, not because of history was secured down in Tucson, but because a legacy of this roster may pave the way for what you can expect in 2024 and beyond. I'm calling my shot. And if freezing cold takes wants to go ahead and put me on their pedestal, I'm all for it. Arizona, before Noah Fafita, leaps and probably hopefully becomes the next Tua Tungavailoa in the NFL, will win a Big 12 title and lead his team to the college football playoff. I'm not making this a declarative statement. I'm promising you. Watch out for the Wildcats in 2024.
they are one of the few teams that I'm looking at right now saying, crap, they're on my schedule. Wave the white flag and call best of luck next year. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.